G'day folks, welcome to the backyard COVID camp. Uh, because of the restrictions and whatnot, uh, we've decided to camp out in the backyard. Uh, my son will be joining me uh, this afternoon, this evening. We're going to get up to some cooking, maybe some fishing. Uh, you'll have to wait and see how that pans out. And so we, now we're going to do the setup and then we'll get straight into it, light a fire and get right into the cooking. Let's go. Okay folks, the, the main camp's set up. Uh, I'm just going to set up this uh, gantry that I've got for cooking. So I'd like you to take a little bit of a closer look at that. So uh, we'll just move the camera a little bit and get you a better shot of that. Okay, time to put the gantry together, but uh, I just wanted to show you these things first. I had myself an idea once upon a time and I, I took a drawing to a, a good friend of mine, a blacksmith up Sydney way, uh, Levi Pendlebury, uh, top bloke and top artist. Uh, I'll, I'll put a, I've forgotten it again, a link in the descriptions, hey, <laughs> uh, so anyway, check out his stuff if, uh, if you'd like that kind of thing, um, so let's go put this stuff together now. Job's done. Righto, firewood. 
Let's get that out now. Why is that? Hey? Why is that? Because it keeps falling over. Hey. Hey. Stay. I lost me spoon. Right, while we're waiting for the fire to, to heat up enough, uh, well enough to cook, uh, I'm going to have a little bit of an opening. Uh, I bought some knives a while ago and I haven't been able to use them, so this is the first occasion. So we're going to open up a little bit of a prezi. If I can figure out how to do this. Oh, this is what I wanted. This is what I bought the whole box for. Righto, let's get into some cutting. We're going to prepare some stuff to, to put on the fire. So we'll start with onions first. Did I say I'm cooking a goulash? That's what I'm doing anyway. My version of it at least. Alright, we'll start with, uh, with some onions. Get the cauldron. Put a little bit of oil in there. That much, maybe. I'm only making a small batch today, so I don't want too many onions. Normally if a big batch you'd put two or three in there, I suppose. But there's only three of us eating it. Fairly large sort of cubes. Alright, there should be enough heat on that to get the onions going. So we'll get that first, brown the onions up a little bit, chuck the meat in, um, brown that up a little bit and then add some water and soon enough we'll be fishing. Alright, so onions have been sautéed, is that the word? Mm -hmm. 
sauteed. The uh, meat's been browned off. You don't want to cook it fully, you just want to brown it off. So we're going to chuck all the other ingredients then, add water, and then we can sit back and have a bevy or two. There's supposed to be some sort of rule for bay leaves. Most people don't put bay leaves in, but I do because I, I like the surprise of finding them in there. Um, that's probably enough, but we probably don't want to stalk. There's that. Red capsicum. This is something I spotted online the other day, so I'm trying half a tablespoon of cumin. I think about that. About a tablespoon of tomato paste. Get in there. Mm. Went about this the wrong way. About halfway between a teaspoon and a tablespoon, I don't know what measurement that is, of uh, vegetable stock. Oh, we'll go a full tablespoon. Yeah, we'll go a full tablespoon. There we go. When, when the relatives cook, um, what I've grown up with is that there's no actual uh, measurement for ingredients. They kind of do it by feel, um, usually under the influence of red wine when the blokes are cooking this out in the backyard. Um, so it's very much just uh, what they feel like doing at the time. So if they wanted to relay the recipe to you, I don't think they could. All right. Last but not least, the sweet Hungarian paprika. Now I've got some good stuff from Hungary, and I haven't got much left of it. Um, so we're going to whack that in there. Um, as, as far as quantity goes, I think about two tablespoons, but you'd play around with that, I reckon. Um, so somewhere between two or three. So the, you, I don't know if the camera can pick that up. There's two different colours there, so there's two different varieties from two different companies. We'll see how that goes. I forgot the Eno. Normally we put Eno in there as well, just to help the meat break down and soften up a little bit as well. Do um, you you know where it is? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be, yeah, oh, well, you got bubs. I can do it. Okay, we're back with the Eno. You don't want too much of this. Normally, I think a teaspoon that's been out in the field for way too long. So I think you can use anything. I don't want to give you a bum steer, but um, it's the sodium bicarbonate that you're after, I believe. Why a big chunk fell in there. We'll get a bit more. So I have been known to, if I've been out bush and, um, and I haven't had such things, I have used soft drink before. Not Coca-Cola. Um, uh, pub squash is usually what I've used in the past. It does give it a sweet taste, but when you got nothing, you use what you got. And it did give it an interesting flavour anyway, and the, the mates that were tasting it for the first time. Ethnic food in general, that is. Um, loved it. So, a win. That's not to say that you use uh, pub squash whenever you, you know, whenever you can. I'm having trouble with a wood fire here. Um, when I was in Hungary a couple of years back, um, my relatives cooked a beautiful big bean stew in pretty much this uh, this setting, but they used nothing but corn husks for the fire. Never seen anything like it. But anyway, it maintained the heat well enough to cook the uh, cook a meal. Oh, I have a shot. Oh, the rod's just done. Come off. Damn antique thing. 
of the reel rod. Right? I don't reckon I'm going to have a win here. What on earth is going on with you? Alright, I've got it this time. Shots, Anthony. Oh, and the reel keeps coming off. What's it's never done that before. All right, um, I've got one shot out of a hundred. <laughs> we'll see how Anthony goes. If he nails it, we're uh, editing it out. All right, well, I've done, gone, redacted it. <laughs> That's why I did it because I knew you would. Oh, maybe you wound it backwards. Did you? No, I was pretty sure I was right. Oh, what's happening? Hang on. No. Okay. No, it's all collecting up. Mine. Put your hand up here, you cut my fingers. That's what's going on. I'm trying to stop <laughs> First one in, I give up. I don't like this rod. <laughs> Back to the other one. Okay. Hmm. That's the end of <laughs> that's the end of the fishing trip. Let's get back to cooking. Now there's a bit of a Hungarian tradition that I grew up with and can't really place too much rhyme or reason towards it except for two things. One is when you're cooking beef goulash, my grandfather once told me that you'd line the bottom of the cauldron with bones so that the actual um, recipe didn't burn and so you wouldn't want to stir that up and so basically it's not stirring it up so the other the, the other reason is um, that once you put the paprika in there or the, the, the capsicum sorry um, you don't want to go stirring that up too much otherwise you'll break all the ingredients up so you just twist it slowly to move all the all the ingredients around and then give it a quick flick and this is something I grew up with all of them do it <coughs> all the rallos It's just something I noticed and I thought I'd share with you. Bit of a tradition. Right, so now with the goulash on the boil, uh, on the simmer, um, it's time to make the dumplings for it. Uh, dumplings being the word that best describes it, I suppose. It's not quite dumplings, I don't know what it is. Um, but egg noodles sort of thing. Uh, anyway, we're going to grab some flour. How much, I don't know. Um, a Hungarian quantity of flour. Bust two eggs into that. 
two eggs in there, a little bit of water. About yay much. And I think it's pretty much the same as a pancake mix. And then what happens is I bring a pot to the boil of water. And then um, I've got this little device that my grandfather made up. And it's just a fry pan with a whole heap of holes cut in. So what we're going to do is create this dough and then put it in the fry pan and then use a wooden spoon or any spoon really and work it through the holes until it goes into the boiling water and then that's how you get your little bits and pieces of dough. So that's a little device there. Uh, <laughs> the granddad took ages to drill that out no doubt. And so we put that over the uh, over the pot of the uh, boiling water and put the dough on the top and then just work it through with a, um, with a spoon until it comes out the other end and it just drops out randomly and goes into the boiling water and boils and away you go. Okay, so we've got our water boiling on this precariously balanced fire. Put our little jigger over the top here. Pour some of the dough in. And start working it in. to go. Righto, pasta's done. Um, I'm going to put the uh, pot back on the heat for just a couple of seconds and um, heat it back up again and uh, we'll be ready to serve. Okay, dish is ready. Uh, pasta's in. Everything's had a chance to cook in. Serving her up. Oh, there's a bit of meat just done, gone right off the edge of the table. Later on when the camera's off, I'm going to eat that. No, you're not. Huh? No, you're not. Oh, is the dog there? Yeah, Benji's here. <laughs> <Go to it. laughs> Screw you, Benji. Well, that brings us uh, to the end of the evening. Uh, we've cooked some goulash. We've done a, bit, a little bit of fishing. Kind of. Well, we've had a bit of fun. Uh, Ant and I are just going to enjoy the fire for a little while, and um, that'll be it. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Catches.